Welcome to this video where we are going to learn how to add an e-commerce facility to a website made in Serif Web Plus. So I've got my Super Splash theme park website here and I have a buy tickets page. But at the moment I have nothing on that page. What I'm going to add is the ability to show all the different types of tickets. So I'm going to have a child ticket, an adult ticket and a family ticket all at different prices and the user will be able to choose how many of each ticket they want and then they'll be able to purchase them using PayPal. Now for our video purposes I'm not actually going to get people buying things through PayPal. We're going to use a sandbox version which means it looks like PayPal but it won't actually process any payments. So to begin we need to go to the insert menu and we're going to choose e-commerce object. The first thing you'll need to do is provide some information about the PayPal form that you want to create. So we need to specify the email address of the PayPal account that's going to receive payments. Again we're not actually going to accept any payments so you can just use your own email address here. Then we need to say what kind of form we want and we're going to want a form that allows us to specify multiple different items, different types of ticket and add them to a cart. So we're going to use a repeating add to shopping cart form. Then press next and you're going to choose the type of button that you want to use. These buttons are going to signify add to basket. So it's quite important that you choose a button that says something like add to basket or add to cart or perhaps does that in a graphical way. For example one of these trolley icons with a plus next to it. I'm going to keep it simple and stick with add to basket as a button. Then press next. Now this is where it gets a little bit interesting. We need to specify where the source data is coming from. And in this case the source data is some sort of database or list of all of the different types of products that we're going to sell. Well we need to create a new data source. So press new and give your data source a file name. I'm going to call mine tickets and I'm going to save it in the same folder that has all of my other uh, items and files for this project. So press save and you'll be asked now to customize the database. Now don't be worried about the huge number of options it presents to you. We only need to keep a few of them. We want to keep item name, item ID, price, quantity, short and long description and everything else we're going to delete. So select the ones we don't want and press delete. When you've only got item name, item ID, price, quantity, short description and long description, you can press OK. Now at this stage there's no data in our data source so we must press edit to add some data. And remember the data we're adding are the items that users can purchase. So these are our types of ticket. So we're going to add a type of ticket by pressing add. Now I'm going to start by creating a child ticket so the item name will simply be child ticket. I'm going to make up an item ID, I'm just going to use number one and I'm going to specify a price for children to come to Super Splash of five pounds. I'm not going to charge additional tax and I'm not worried about my, how much it weighs so I'll press next. I'm not adding an image to this item, I could do uh, so next to that ticket I could have a little picture of a child to make it obvious this was a child ticket but I am going to add a short description. I'm also going to add a slightly longer description just to explain exactly what it is that people are buying. Once you've written your long description you can just press next. I'm not going to specify any other options for this item so I just press next and I'm going to set the default quantity just to one of those tickets and I'm going to make sure that I've ticked this box that says add edit box for user to specify quantity on page. That means that users will be able to change the number of those types of tickets that they wish to add to their basket. So once you've got that all set press finish and now we've got an item in our products list. Um, we need to have some more tickets for adults and families so I'm going to press copy and that produces a second copy of the child ticket and I'm just going to edit it. I'm going to change it to adult, change its adult ticket ID to ID2. I'm going to change the price to £10 per adult. And I'm just going to alter my descriptions. 
press next, next again, default quantity is still one, users need to have an edit box, finish. And finally, I'm gonna add a family ticket, so I'll press copy, and I'm gonna edit that copy. My family ticket ID will be three. I'm gonna charge 25 pounds entry for a family, and I'm gonna alter my description. Then I'll press next. Again, I'm not specifying any additional options, so next. My default quantity is one, finish. And now I have my list of all the different types of tickets, and you could add more if you wanted to. Once you're done, press OK. Make sure that your database is going to be using the appropriate currency for wherever you are in the world, and press Next. We want to prompt customers for their address when they're paying, so we'll leave that as it is, and press Next. And on this page, you don't need to specify any checkout page style. You should make sure that the language slash country is correct for where you're based but everything else can just be left in their default states and we'll press next. On the form layout page, just choose simple. Make sure that we've got the boxes ticked that say show the item name and the price on the form, otherwise people won't know how much it costs. We do not need to tick show the merged item image on the form unless you have put an image with that item. We do want to show the long description and the short description and we'll add a dummy quantity edit box so we can sort of play around with altering the quantities. Once that's all done, press finish. And now you just need to click on your page where you want your uh, tickets to appear. What you will see is a single item, even though we had three tickets. And that's because this is a template. And what will happen is that we're in a moment going to merge our data with our template and it will produce as many of these as are needed for each of the items in our database. But we can do a, a few bits of tweaking before then. For example, this is a very large add to cart button, so you might want to make it a bit smaller. We might also want to change our descriptions so that they show perhaps in bold or slightly larger. We give more space for our long description and we can move our price and quantities around a little bit. Perhaps we want to have quantity after the price. Once you're happy with your layout and design for each individual item, we now need to do something called merging. And this is like doing a mail merge if you've ever done that before. To do that, just click somewhere on your placeholder and you'll know you've got it selected because you'll see these options, edit database, repeating area layout, and so on, so on, so on. And most importantly, you'll see merge to new site. And what we're going to do is we're going to press that button and Serif Web Plus will produce a new copy of our website where it has all of the pages and all of the content we've already got in our website, but it adds in the buy tickets page an entry for every single item in our database. So press merge to new site. Web Plus will do its thing. And when it's finished, you'll see you have a new tab open. You've got your original web page a website and you've got your merged website. And if you go to your tickets page, you should see that you've now got an item for each of the different uh, tickets that were in your database. So we can preview this and see how it works. So here I am on my tickets page and I'm going to specify that I want to buy mm, two adult tickets and one child ticket. So I'm gonna add my child ticket to the cart and hey presto, my little um, PayPal overlay drops down. I'm gonna add two adult tickets to the cart. So they get added, it shows my subtotal of 25 pounds and I can now go ahead and buy these by pressing checkout. And this will take me to a simulated environment in PayPal. And you'll be able to see that it shows the email address of the person that's receiving the payment. So that's the email address we added at the start. We've got our basket uh, total has come through and we can either log into PayPal with our own accounts or we can create a new account if we don't have one already. Now, if you have a PayPal account, you can log in and you can go all the way through to pretending to make a payment. It won't actually make a payment, um, because we've got it in this quote unquote sandboxed environment and you know it's sandboxed, it says sandbox.paypal.com. 
But you can have a go with it, you can play with it, uh, it works exactly like real PayPal. So that's how you can add a proper functioning shopping facility into your Serif Web Plus websites. As a quick recap, we started by going to Insert, E-commerce Object, choosing the PayPal option, configuring the settings for PayPal, creating a data source for our items, adding details for each item, and then crucially, we had to merge from our original website into our new website. Now, if you've continued to make any changes to this website, you're going to have to press save and you will now have two different Serif Web Plus projects. However, if you've not actually made any changes to this since it was merged, you can just save your original project and continue working on it. And then every time you want to uh, test it out, you just need to re-merge to a new site. So I hope you've enjoyed learning about how to add e-commerce facility to your websites and I hope that you are able to make some great use of it in your own projects.